Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Welcome to Good Question, a show where we explore the good, the bad, and the oftentimes bizarre moments of communication and see what lessons they have for us. Hi, my name is Dr. Heather Thompson Day, and I am a communication and rhetoric professor at Colorado Christian University. Today, we are reacting to a clip by Nancy Pelosi on George Floyd and Derek Chauvin. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice, for being there to call out to your mom. How, how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom. I can't breathe, but because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. And now we have to make sure justice prevails in the sentencing, but that's, you know, that's, that's its own procedure. So this would be an example of bad communication. So why is this bad communication? That's a really good question. Communication is always about your audience. It's actually never about the sender at all. A competent communicator always opens every single message with the audience in mind. I am going to assume that there's not too many people of color on her communication staff because a person of color would probably never thank George Floyd for his death and his sacrifice. We just wouldn't see black bodies as a sacrifice that needs to be made in order for justice to be served. Something that I think that Nancy was doing that was probably a good strategic move was to bring up the aspect between George Floyd and his mother. For being there to call out to your mom, how, how heartbreaking was that? That was one of the most difficult and uncomfortable parts to watch of that video is this grown man crying out for his mom and just hoping that somebody stops and hears him. I think Nancy Pelosi using that imagery of the mother actually is probably a good thing to reach your audience. However, because, so here's this thing, in communication, we have primacy recency. And primacy says what comes first exerts the most influence and what comes last exerts the most influence. So the problem is that she opened that by talking about the sacrifice that jo George has made. And that immediately, primacy, what comes first exerts the most influence. It's hard for me, for me to even hear the other things that are being said because I'm so disheartened and thrown off by that first original statement. So here's what I would want everybody listening to understand. The first thing you say really does matter. Your first impressions matter. Some psychologists say that we have four seconds. That's all we give one another for first impressions is four seconds. So that first time when you walk into a door of an interview or on a date, those first seconds actually really matter. So think through what you wanna say on that first phone call or first meeting. Something else that Nancy says that I think is an important strategic move communication wise is to bring up the thousands and millions of people who have joined in on this conversation. Because now what we've done is we've created this sense of community of people who are all rallying behind this same cry. And that's a really good move to do as a communication person. This isn't just about me. This is about us and how this is affecting all of us. So while Nancy tries to make up in these later lines that she puts out for the first blunder that she did, I honestly think it's just, it was too little too late. All of those things that you say afterwards, remember with that primacy rule, becomes difficult for an audience to hear because I, I'm literally still thinking about that first thing that you said and it's hard for me to stomach. I feel very uncomfortable. And it just creates this, this narrative. I saw actually a pastor um, pretty well-known large evangelist back when this, when George Floyd first happened, when the incident first took place, he also thanked him for his sacrifice and he made some type of reference between like Samson um, pulling, pouring down the pillars and that being like the last sacrifice that he made so that um, Israel could be safe. And again, people felt very uncomfortable with that coming from a mega church pastor because we don't believe that people should have to be sacrificed in order for society to gain. We should be able to see all people as individuals worthy of justice and worthy of their own humanity without having to sacrifice their lives in the process. It's just a very uncomfortable narrative to even push. And I wish that somebody on her staff would have talked to her before she said that. I think the reason that this whole analogy of human sacrifice is 
off base. It's it's just the, like this very utilitarian model that makes black people very uncomfortable because so many lives have already been lost. We're talking about we're talking about years and years of slavery that have already ex happened. And so much still seems to be misunderstood about black pain and black justice. I think we're still missing centering that audience at all. Because remember, communication is always about the person. So what we should always do before we craft any of our messages is really try, and I say this to people before they do any public speaking to begin with, you, the first thing you wanna do is say, who is this audience and how can I connect to them? How do I reach them? What are the things that they care about? And how do I share in those things that I care about? And how do I create imagery through my words that crafts this narrative of community for us together? And I think that initial opening of George Floyd sacrificing himself that all may gain is just very uncomfortable because for, for black people, it's not like this is just George Floyd, this is me. This could be my dad. This could be my son. I don't want to lose my son so that the rest of society can gain. That's not justice for me. And so I think that's why the initial analogy is so off base. So something I talk about with my students all the time, one of the courses I teach is persuasion. And we talk about how you don't win arguments, you win affection. The goal is never to win an argument with something with somebody because most of our thinking is actually highly emotional. It's like 80% of our choices are done based off of emotion. So we think of ourselves as these really logical people who really think things through. And I crossed my, my T's and dotted my I's and this is the logical choice that I came up with. That's not actually what happens. Almost all of our decisions are highly emotional and then we go back and we confirm those emotions with logic. So you're never trying to win people's arguments or win your own argument over people, what you're trying to do is win their affection. And some of the best ways to win affection is what we talked about in the beginning, which is thinking about them and centering them in the argument. So let's put it this way. In communication, the goal is never to drag a person over to your message. And I think oftentimes when we think about something like winning an argument, what you're saying is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming and this is going to be so good that you're going to be compelled to come over here to my argument. Communication people don't think like that. We're not trying to drag people over to our messages. We're trying to bring a message to a person. And that is why communication is so difficult. That is why asking the right questions from the beginning is so important. Having a good question to start the conversation is one of the most vital pieces of your conversation because it's not about you. It's about how do I connect to this person? And you can't do that if you haven't asked some really good questions. So I think in order to have done this conversation a little bit differently, some of the first things that should have happened, of course, if we're going to talk to any target market, we should at first have conversations with those people and ask how they see this issue. Because I think if that had happened beforehand, she would have never made the statement that she did. I think a far better way to approach this conversation would be to say, you know, this doesn't even feel like justice because children have still lost their father and a mother has still lost her son and a brother has still lost his brother. So this doesn't feel like justice, but at least it's a step forward in our country and making sure that people are held accountable for their actions. You've just watched the first episode in a brand new series exploring the how-tos of good and effective communications. Um, it's actually one of the themes that I see most commonly in the comment sections of our YouTube channel, that people wish that they could have the same kind of deeper and more thoughtful conversations um, with the people in their lives. The reality is, is that from the time that we're little Mateo's age, most of us are not taught to be good question askers, to be good listeners, to be good communicators, if anything like that. But that's the hope of our little corner of the internet, is that we can reverse this change and, and really help build empathy and, and this idea of spiritual exploration and curiosity with all the kinds of people that we get to run into uh, today. And so that's the heart behind this series, uh, to give you an insight to the kinds of questions that I'm asking myself as I engage with people who see the world through a different lens than I do.
P.S. If you haven't yet stumbled onto all the amazing things that Dr. Heather Day does on the internet, do yourself a favor and check out her Twitter feed. She is easily my single most favorite follow on the platform and I know that you won't be disappointed.